Okay, uh, so uh, hi, Michael. Great to have you here again today. Michael Hansen from Grow Genie. Um, yeah, Michael, I, I, I wanted to have you on because we're doing this video series around um, different tips that we can give sales teams to start implementing immediately. Um, I think at the moment, generally anyway, uh, um, across the board, it's, it's always good for, for advice, but I think things that people can really take away and start implementing from today onwards um, is, is really helpful, especially things that don't need an awful lot of resource. Maybe it's some suggestions on which tools they should use, et cetera, et cetera. But first and foremost, thanks so much for coming on, Michael. No, likewise, Andy. Always, always a pleasure to be on. Yeah, great. So, in terms of what you're offering to your customer base at the moment, is there anything like any insights that you can give us? A couple of tips that that sales teams can take away and go and achieve and do right now, Michael. Yeah, for sure. And I think some of these tips may seem quite obvious to you know very good salespeople, but based on some of the training and, and coaching that that I give salespeople, I've noticed these are the very common things that people aren't doing, which is why I wanted to to prescribe these particular advice. So the first one is I always recommend to be a sales doctor. Um, you may ask, you know, what do I mean by, by sales doctor? It's like when you go into a doctor, they'll always diagnose before they prescribe you anything. So they'll ask you, you know, what's wrong with you? What are your symptoms, et cetera? And one of the big mistakes I, I see salespeople making is that they're not doing that. They're always talking about, you know, the, the prescription before the diagnosis. So it's all about asking questions to understand what are the pain points of your potential prospect or customer. And then after that, talking about your solution, because you won't actually know about how your solution fixes their pains, obviously, until, until you understand the pain. So that's one. Um, the second one is, is related to that. So you may be asking, how do I understand the pains? How do I uncover those pains? What kind of questions can I ask? So I always recommend to open to ask open-ended questions that can uncover those pains. What can be quite a good thing to do is look at the, your ideal customer profile, what are the top five challenges they may have, and then try to write questions around those challenges. Um, so I thought I'd give an example just based on the fact that, that I know Lead Feeder. Um, so in, in your field, one of the pains may be that companies spend a lot of time researching, you know, who are the companies who are in the market for them, so something you could ask is, you know, out of interest, how much time does, does your marketing or sales team spend on, on researching their um, ideal accounts versus actually reaching out to them? Um, and that's a, a good question because they could say, you know, 40% of the time is, is spent on admin and 60% of the time is spent on selling. And you obviously want 100% of the time spent on selling, right? So of course. Um, a third one is, you know, something Andy and I discussed uh, recently was um, about outbound calling. Um, so we were actually talking about it in the sense of, of prospecting. But the biggest area of opportunity I've actually seen with with salespeople is it the 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 closing part. So if you're an account executive salesperson who's actually taking it through to the end is using outbound calling once you've actually had a demo or a consultation if you're a service because the big mistake i see with salespeople is they just send a few follow-up emails you know first email will be send the proposal second email did you see the proposal third email is you know just the chase where actually if you're using kind of an omni-channel approach the same as like an sdr does as an account executive that's very useful because you can call them have a more interactive conversation really see what their objections are so that's why i recommend if you're like an account executive people you've already got in the pipeline you know actually pick up the phone and, and call them as well um, and then just in terms of calling so this is the fourth one if you're either yeah an sdr account executive wherever you are in the sales process one of the, the most difficult things nowadays with calling is, is getting someone to pick up the phone because we're becoming more and more digital. It becomes harder and harder to actually get someone to, to connect, to, to pick up their phone. So one of the ways I recommend to get around this, especially if you're targeting someone quite senior in the company, like a VP, C-level, et cetera, is to call them early in the morning, so around 8 o'clock. Um, and that means they should be awake. Maybe they're having breakfast but they're not in the nitty gritty of their day where they've got a million people actually trying to contact them. Um, and then same contact them maybe at like 5.30, 6 p.m. And that's when their, their day's finished. They're kind of winding down. They're a little bit more relaxed. So those are a, a couple of things that I'd recommend in terms of times to actually um, pick up the phone and, and call people. Um, and then the last one, I, th I think Andy will like this, as I know he's big on, on marketing and sales alignment. I have quite a lot of marketing in, in my background as well, is align with marketing a lot, 
um, like speak to marketing the whole time. I'm, I'm same as Andy in that I think sales and marketing should be one engine. Um, and then a big thing is, you know, ask them about the content that's been successful because you may have seen a lot of stuff on online recently. Um, people like Josh Braun talk about deposits. I talk about giving before you take. And it's like what I was saying before about, about diagnosing. You don't want to, on your first email or first LinkedIn message, just be talking about you. If you can share content that's related to some of those challenges earlier, that's a really good way. And, you know, a lot of the way I start sales conversations, I have two two or three bits of content that I know that, that kind of really resonate. And I'll just send them to people and often they'll reply and say thanks and I'll start a conversation. So if you can speak to your marketing team and say, what are the bits of content that, you know, are getting lots of clicks in email or videos that are getting lots of views, podcasts that are getting lots of listens? Ask them about those. And those are great things to, to then send to your um to your prospects if you're in sales. So that would be my uh, my last tip. Yeah, they're great tips, Michael. I think just on your last point there around sales and marketing alignment, as you said, this is something that I specialize in, but mainly because I've been in a sales background myself before. I've also, I've, I've been an SDR, I've been an account manager, I've managed an SDR team. Um, and when I managed the SDR team, I actually brought them under the marketing umbrella. So they, I was I was a VP of marketing and marketing and SDRs both reported to me. Um, and I think like the number one thing that I find across a lot of people that I know that are in marketing and also in sales is that that alignment thing isn't a given. It's not just, it doesn't just happen. There needs to be somebody that's orchestrating it. I'd always be the orchestrator of, the, of that. I'd always be like the conductor between sales and marketing to make sure that they're speaking to one another. Um, like even before I joined Lead Feeder, they would they like they were of the opinion that they were aligned, but their KPIs weren't aligned. So um, when I joined, I started pushing more. Okay, let's get marketing really focused on the um, on the revenue side of things, and that automatically. Like once you get once you start mar- putting revenue targets towards a marketing team, you're going to have to get the sales and marketing team aligned. They're going to have to do it themselves because anything anywhere that you're spending money needs to make sense. Because if it's not bringing back revenue, then it's going to be seen as a, as a failure. So you need to be making sure that the marketing team are then discussing that with the sales team and saying, "Hey, if I bring in leads from this specific place, are they actually converting to business?" Even if you don't have a good way of tracking that, the best way to find out is to go and ask the sales team. You know these conversations maybe hadn't have happened before in the past, but that's where you start, in my opinion, is with you know making sure KPIs align and it's normally around revenue. And if you're promising from a marketing org back to the sales org being like, okay, my content can help you bring an extra X amount of pipeline that you're going to have to go search for anyway yourself, then you're going to be pretty sure that the marketing and sales team are going to be pretty well aligned. Yeah. Um, like, and, and it's good from a sales perspective as well to push it. You know, like if based on what you just mentioned there, Having content which you can you can you can push out to prospects, knowing that it resonates, rather than just going straight in with an offer or something. Yeah. Um, salespeople know that works, and what you need to do as a salesperson is then go put pressure on the marketing team. If they don't yeah. have that content there, start putting pressure on them to get them to create that content. If they're not creating that content for you, create something yourself and push it across to the marketing. And I guarantee you, there's nothing worse than getting some some of the piece of content that's been written by a salesperson if you're marketing because you're like, this is supposed to be my job and sales shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, right? no, <laughs> yeah what, one of the things I didn't mention actually is related to, to one of the points. I was talking about the, the follow-up once you've had a meeting to help convert um, a lead to, to close one. And that's another point where you can use that content. I was kind of talking about it from a prospecting perspective, from an SDR, first or second touch using content. I found that a lot of deals that that I've closed is I've sent a proposal, I've got next steps in the diary. They may not turn up for that call. I'm like, you know, what's going wrong? I can't get hold of them. And then I'll share like a piece of content on LinkedIn. No CTA, let's go on another call. Have you seen the proposal? And I know it's super relevant to them. And actually at that point, not have you seen the proposal, they'll say, oh, I love that piece of content. Let's get on that call. So that's another good way, even like account executives, they can be using content to like nurture leads as well. It's an easier foot in the door and it's not such a hard sell. You know, Uh, like recently enough, we had a a big deal close and it closed because of uh, an effort that we'd done uh, from actually from the marketing side of an account-based marketing campaign which we um, we had we've been speaking with a specific company, an enterprise an enterprise company, actually the biggest deal that we've closed in the company's history, would you believe? Wow. Um, and uh, it had gone quiet for about two months, so our contact person there had gone a bit quiet. And then what had happened is we did an ABM campaign, which focused on a different um, 
a different person within the organization that was already aware of us that we'd already been speaking with, but the user role was a little bit different. That person downloaded an ebook. And then like the salesperson then just followed up with an additional piece of content saying like, if you enjoyed the ebook, you know, here's some more information or another blog post around that specific topic. Have a read. If there's anything more that you need, let me know. And like a day later, hey, yeah, we're interested in pushing forward. We really need the solution, blah, blah, blah. You know, like it was, it was a very soft touch, but that soft yeah. touch then turned into our biggest deal ever. <laughs> so, so, you know, so it, yeah, it goes to show that the power of content and the power of not being too salesy. Okay, Michael, look, thank you. That's all the time we have for today, but really big thank you. And thank you for putting the, those couple of tips out to people. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. And I really look forward to speaking with you again, yeah? Likewise, Andy, hope we'll be chatting soon. And anyone who's listening, feel free to, to connect with me on LinkedIn. Cheers, Michael. Thanks, Andy.